Hello Mets fans, welcome back to the channel and we have some fairly breaking news here to announce. John Morosi earlier this morning on MLB Network has stated how there is one team in particular that he is keeping close tabs and close attention to, especially even this week with the Colorado Rockies looking for a team to engage with in a possible trade and that is the New York Mets and the player involved in this trade is none other than star third baseman and Nolan Arenado. That is absolutely mind blowing. We've already had some type of a grasp as to to the Rockies wanting to trade away him because they more than likely want to keep Trevor Story long term and they won't be able to handle both those big contracts that are inevitably going to happen. So the Rockies are looking for suitors and they're looking to heavily engage with the New York Mets. So that is what we will be breaking down in today's video. Nolan Arenado, who he is, everything there is to know about his game, the connection currently to the Mets, why it would and would it make sense for a trade to possibly happen and everything in between. And as always guys, if you end up enjoying this kind of Mets content, please share this video with your friends hit like and subscribe help us get a thousand subscribers it would really mean a lot and i can't thank you all enough for the overwhelming support as of late but without further ado guys let's get right into this video here we have star third baseman in Nolan Arenado, the 29 year old third baseman at 6'2", 215 pounds, originally drafted in the second round back in 2009 by the Rockies, has been one of the best hitters and the best overall third baseman in the entire MLB for the majority of his career, and it looks like he has been the best third baseman in all of baseball for the past couple decades. Truly remarkable. When you look at his numbers in the 2020 short season, 48 games played and 182 at bats, he had 8 home runs, 26 RBIs, an average of 253, and on base 303, a slugging at 434, and an OPS of 738. In the 2019 season, he put up amazing numbers per usual in 155 games played and 588 at bats. He had 41 home runs, 118 RBIs, a 315 batting average, a 379 on base percentage, a 583 slugging, and a 962 OPS. Looking at his career totals in 1,079 games played and 4,118 at bats, Arenado has racked up 235 home runs. 760 RBIs, a career batting average of 293, an on-base percentage of 349, a slugging of 541, and an OPS of 890. Nolan has at least 37 home runs and 110 RBIs in five of the past six seasons, and really for five consecutive seasons up until the short in 2020 season. Nolan's awards are nothing short of jaw-dropping, being a five-time NL All-Star from the span of 2015 to 2019, a four-time NL Silver Slugger from the span of 2015 to 2018, a four-time NL Platinum Glove from the span of 2017 to 2020, an eight-time NL Gold Glover from 2013 to 2020, and a three-time Defensive Player of the Year from 2015 to 2017. Whew, I feel like I need a breather after reading off all those stats and accolades, but that's just how good Nolan Arenado is. He's been not just the best third baseman in baseball for the majority, if not the entirety of his career, but he's been the best third baseman in baseball really for the past couple of decades. That is how phenomenal he is from his defensive game and his batting. And yes, I know people are going to slight him for how he plays outside of the cores, but I don't really want to hear that because a guy of Arenado's caliber, it's okay if he sees some type of dip when it comes to his offensive production because of what you're getting with an overall player. Player. That's my personal opinion, but I think that holds true. He's just really unlike any other guy that you'll see in that infield at third base. He's just remarkable from a game to game basis, and he's consistent. The guy has been in at least 150 games the past five seasons outside of the shore in 2020 season. So this guy is in the lineup constantly and healthy. That is huge for him given his contract. And that is another big key here, which could very well favor the Mets in a deal because he has around six years, $199 million left on that massive originally eight year contract contract with an AEV around $32.5 million per year. You're talking that's probably around half of what the Mets are currently dealing with when it comes to free agency, if not less or more, probably I would say maybe a little bit um, a little bit less than half because the Mets are dealing with a lot of money, as we know, at least 60 million for the 150 uh, dollar, uh, 150 million luxury tax. Um, but regardless, the Mets are in a prime spot here should they go down this route. And I, I truly believe that they will at least show some consideration i know that there has been some interest in there in the past so time will tell but to get a guy like arenado you'd probably get him on somewhat of a discount mainly because one 
The Rockies are in a bind right now. They know that they need to get rid of one of him or Story, and they want to keep Story long term, and he is definitely due for a huge payday. He's one of the better uh, short, shortstops in all of the MLB. So when you look at Trevor Story, they want to keep him, so they have to get rid of Arenado in that contract. That could benefit the Mets a lot when it comes to a deal as it is, knowing that they're kind of cornered to an extent. They don't want to trade him away in the NL West still to a team like the LA Dodgers. That's what all the reports are indicating, and for good reason, obviously. And then you also have the fact that Nolan Arenado he has an opt-out after the 2021 season which means that he very well could hit free agency again and because there is that risk factor at the end of the day that could benefit the Mets even more in regards to a trade and the type of package that they would have to give up for a guy like Arenado. So if we take a look at to look at some trade proposals that SNY came out with earlier today because of John Morosi's initial thoughts on MLB Network, you see Robinson Cano as a, possibly a part of that deal to free up some cap space and knowing that the Colorado Rockies can in fact handle that cap hit. Along with Brandon Nimmo, who could be a centerpiece, which would make a lot of sense for the Mets, especially if they still are able to land a guy in George Springer, then you have that spot filled up basically. And then you can figure out what you want to do with say the left field, for instance, if you want to say, have a guy like Dom Smith get more time in the outfield or whatever you're going to do, possibly McNeil, but McNeil is obviously better off in the infield. He's his second baseman through and through, as we know. But regardless, the Mets can make that deal happen. I wouldn't like to see Brett Beatty go, even though, yes, a significant prospect would probably have to be part of this deal, but I have a feeling that the Mets could make something work without having Beatty a part of it. I get it. He's a third baseman, but he is really the best prospect arguably for the Mets right now and I would not like to see them get rid of him Now I know that Alderson would not be ready or willing to get rid of him I know Cohen wouldn't feel that way and same thing with Jared Porter but I can at least agree with them on this that they have said that when an opportunity presents himself with a star a prime player and Nolan Arenado is definitely that he's the best third baseman he would be easily the best third baseman the Mets have had since David Wright and when you look at his actual numbers he's a better overall third baseman which uh than David Wright which is just insane because we all love David the Cap Captain, but Arenado is just that good. Even at the age of 29, roughly 30 now, if not already, he's in the prime of his career. And I really think coming into a Mets lineup in this win now stage under Steve Cohen in this new regime, he would be really enticed to want to stay with them long term and not opt out after uh, the 2021 season. So time will tell, but I do think that a trade could happen. And then when you look at the other trade proposal, you have Juris Familia, JD Davis, and Josh Wolf. I don't dislike that trade at all. I, I would actually be quite in favor for it regarding the Mets. I love JD Davis, but the at the same time, if the Mets are able to make a trade like that happen for a guy like Arenado, you do it in a heartbeat if you ask me. I get it, he takes up so much of your salary as it is, but at the same time, the Mets are in a prime spot to really do everything they possibly can to make sure that Arenado wants to stay long term. And I get it, the back half of that contract is not going to look pretty. I would assume that Arenado is probably going to have hopefully another two to three years really in the prime of his career putting up amazing numbers. But time will tell how that goes, but I want to make something clear regarding the, uh, Arenado and this contract, and a lot of people don't seem to realize this. The Mets are in a prime spot now where they can handle, say, a contract that long term doesn't look great but short term looks fantastic because they can deal with the financial repercussions that are bound to come. If they need to bury this contract ever after a couple years or trade him away, they can probably make that happen, even if they have to eat some of that salary. So the Mets are really in a great spot now to make things happen, to take advantage of the dollars that they currently have. And even if they do in fact land Arenado, it doesn't mean that's out of the realm of possibility for them still getting a guy like George Springer, helping out on the rotation, probably going for a cheaper guy. I'd say Trevor Bowers is definitely out of the equation at that point, and also helping out with some decent options in the bullpen and still helping to round out this roster. So overall, I think the Mets can really make something great happen here. And I would be simply ecstatic. You know, the same reports came out earlier with a guy like Francisco Lindor, as we know. If that picks up again, that I'll definitely touch on the on the channel. But when I first started the channel, they weren't they already kind of died down at that point. But you know, the Indians and the Rockies are in similar spots trying to trade away guys that they know basically that they one, they can't afford, but two, Lindor is bound to hit free agency in a year. And then when you look at uh, Arenado, he could opt out, which kind of seems inevitable if he stays with the Rockies and two because of the fact that they want to keep Trevor Story long term and they can't afford both contracts so that seems like that is currently what's going on between the Mets and the Rockies and the fact that Morosi came out already and said how he's keeping a strong eye a strong interest in the Mets on this front if something may actually pick up some steam that is just simply ecstatic out of all these free agency talks that we've been having there no one Arenado is the top dog he is the star for sure and it really isn't even that close from the other guys currently available as great as George Springer is as great as DJ LeMahieu is as great as all these other free agents are Nolan Arenado even with that cat with um, his current contract is truly otherworldly as a defender 
and the Mets can land him and still be able to distribute some money elsewhere to really run out this roster for not just the short term but long term future, then I say go all in. But I understand the perfect arguments against it that are worried about, hey, we simply won't have enough money to get all the key pieces that we could acquire in free agency or other trade avenues, say like a Francisco Lindor, if you want to go for him and try to lock him up long term, like the Mookie Betts situation between the Dodgers and the Red Sox. I understand that. But as always, guys, I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. How do you feel about these latest reports coming out from John Morosi this morning at MLB Network, connecting Nolan Arenado once again to the New York Mets, but actually having I mean, significant reporting on the Rockies, Rockies, in fact, wanting to engage with the Mets on a possible deal. I love that idea, but a lot needs to go right for both sides to really be happy in the end without there being any too much financial repercussions the Mets way when they still have to address other holes in the lineup for the remainder of free agency heading into the 2021 season. But thank you all so much again, guys. It means an absolute ton. If you enjoyed this video, please share with your friends, hit like and subscribe. And if you want to see more Mets content like this, make sure to do all those things and help us reach a thousand subscribers. It would really mean a lot, guys, because then I can start doing live streams with all you lovely guys answering questions, talking about the Mets, live streaming when the Mets games actually happen during the season. I can get my commentary on them and, and everything in between. But thank you all so much. It means a ton. Expect plenty more Mets content here going forward. And I'll see you guys next time.